Hello, hello. Welcome back to one more episode of the delicious podcast, Navigating Mindfulness, where we have the opportunity to excel and help you move through difficulties, obstacles, opportunities for growth in your life while you build your successful business. My name is Cheryl Sutherland, and I'm joined, of course, with my amazing co-host, the one and only Lisa McHale. Say hello to the people, Lisa. Hi, people. Thanks for joining another episode. Yes. Now, we also have a sweet treat for you. So if I was to open up my jewelry box of friends, because all of my friends are worth more than gold. They are. (laughs) They're just so precious to me. Brie would be shining there as this lovely piece of amethyst just glistening staring at me saying you have to wear me the the shine is just so bright that like sometimes I have to wear your shade so I've had the opportunity to play with Brie see her grow in her journey for the last five years and from moving from fashion into entrepreneurial endeavors coaching consulting and now she's actually ranked as Google's number one entrepreneur coach. And she's all about helping entrepreneurs create long-term sustainable success. And of course, doing it in a way that feels good to them. Now, this is actually really, really important to me because I feel like there's no cookie cutter way for you to experience success, for you to create success. And Brie is amazing at this. She's actually won a bunch of awards like a 2020 Stevie Award for both Coach and Woman of the Year. And she is actually a newly inducted member of the Forbes Coaches Council. She's also, she, she doesn't sleep actually, in case you were wondering, because she's also the author of the best-selling book, Permission to Leap. And I'm just so excited to have her with me today because like, she's legit one of my favorites. Brie, welcome to the podcast. (laughs) Thank you for having me. And I will also say I sleep on average at least eight hours a night. I mean, look at that. Okay. The hustle has been revised. Okay. We're not grinding. We're napping. I am all about the naps. I have the best couch. I, I swear to God, I just have a cat just to like have a nap partner. Like I am all about, I mean, and so talking about, you know, diving right in that whole idea of like success on your terms, like sleep is a hugely important element of my life. And I don't, so many people go through entrepreneurship and like put themselves through the ringer and feel like shit all the time. And just like, why? why are we getting into business for ourselves if we are forcing ourselves to do these things and feel terrible in our lives and businesses all the time? I'm just not all about it. So I'm a huge proponent for like sleep and rest and space. Yes. And play. I've seen you throwing those pots on the IG girl, throw it. It's giving me ghost vibes. I'm here for it. I hear the little (laughs) song in the background. I'm not going to sing it because I value you guys. <laughs> I am actually going to the pottery studio tonight. My marketing team actually wants me to record myself. So for anyone wondering, I do pottery on the wheel. They want me to record a video of myself doing like a whatever, making something on the wheel and putting my cat, putting peaches <laughs> as like superimposing her behind me and putting her little paws on top of my paws while I'm like, oh, how cute. <laughs> So as Google's number one entrepreneur coach, I've had the opportunity to absorb so much knowledge from Brie in so many different ways, whether it's just, you know, creeping in on her clubhouse rooms, having her speak to uh, some of my members in the VIP community. And I think one of the most delicious ways that I can really tap into the juice that is Brie Seely is to talk about mindset. Now, the fun thing about mindset is everybody's like, oh, you have to have your mindset right. If your mindset isn't correct, you're not going to attract the money you want. You're not going to get the opportunities you want. You're not going to be able to move through the obstacles that come up for you. And it is, in fact, one of the most important things. However, just like practicing gratitude, just like doing meditation or any of those sort of activities, it can be very hard for people to understand the tangible benefits of it and really why this is important. For me, I kind of equate it to, you know, taking a vitamin, like, you know, it's good for you, but why? So we have Brie on as a special guest. So, so you can actually learn more about what are the tangible tools to success in your mindset? How do you actually start practicing these things the difference that it makes, and then give you real world of examples of moving through, of creating amazing things and of growing yourself in your business. Um, so Brie, let's talk mindset. 
Let's do it. <laughs> and I, I love this conversation too, because like as we were chatting, getting ready for this conversation, uh, I mentioned like the, the hardest thing that I think about mindset is that there's no measure for it, right? You're going to the gym every day. You can like measure how, you know, your bicep growth, you can measure your, you know, in losing inches, you can measure money in your business. You can't measure the effects of mindset. It's really difficult, not in a direct way. And so I love this conversation because when we can start to look at mindset as like a non-negotiable in our business, that's when I found that things really started shifting for me. And a lot of what I'm about to share is stuff that I didn't have. They were tools that I didn't have when I was running my fashion business. And I can like directly look at the results in my fashion business and say, wow, I wonder if I'd had these tools, if my results would have shifted because that experience was so radically different from running this business. And when I started this business, having those tools. And so the, the thing that I always tell people is you as the entrepreneur are the beginning and the end of your business. So your business can only grow in relation to you. If you have a ceiling within yourself about a belief that you have, about what you believe, you know, what you think you're capable of, what you think is possible for you, that, that is it. Um, the guy who wrote the foreword to my book, Naveen Jain, talks about when you believe something to be impossible, that thing instantaneously becomes impossible, but only for you. So if I believed that something was impossible, it would be impossible for me, but Cheryl and Lisa, you could like if you guys believed it was possible for you, you'd just take it and run, right? So mindset for me is a way for you to create a bigger container and bigger opportunities for yourself. And as a result of that, then your business. I think as entrepreneurs, we always tend to put our businesses first. And that's just, that's like the opposite of how it should be. You have to put yourself first. You have to do the inner work because your business can't outgrow you. You have to be the one to go there first. I love that because there's such a really clear example of people that have had businesses and like the, the first business and it fails and they do their second business and it excels. And it's because they use that first business as training. Like that was their training wheels. And then as it, you started this new business, you don't have all the misconceptions and the history and the practices of like, I can't do this. I don't feel comfortable with this. This isn't going to happen for me. This isn't going to work for me. That has been going on in your previous business. Now it's a clean slate and you personally have grown and are able to do so many different things. So I would love to hear more about like your actual journey itself in regards to the times where you had an opportunity to stay the same and the times where you had the opportunity to grow and shift. Now we spoke previously, you had a fashion business and now you are in a different field, which some people may think is completely different than um, like a whole 180 from where you were. So share with us how you actually grew through the transition from your previous career to your current career. Yeah. So I, I have two degrees in fashion, a bachelor's and a master's, um, moved to a space where I just couldn't get a job in fashion because I, I was living in a small town. So I got a day job and then started a fashion business on the side. And so I, I only ever started it as a side hustle, but little by little, year after year, it kept growing and growing and growing. Um, I, at some point, got on to the hamster wheel, as I call it, in the midst of all of that. And the fashion industry is a very... Uh, hamster wheel inducing industry. And so I hopped on that, that hamster wheel and just started down the path of like stress and distraction about all the things in the outer world. And to be honest, didn't even know a lot of this mindset stuff when I was in that business. So that business lasted me for eight years. I knew I was frustrated. I knew I was burning myself out. I knew I wasn't creating the results that I wanted. I knew that like it just wasn't working, but I didn't know what else was available to me. And so I really doubled down um, 
2015, I really started doubling down on my meditation practice and my inner practice and having a morning practice. And I went to a conference that January and by March, I was meditating at a girlfriend's house and heard this very clear and loud message, fashion, isn't it? Shut it down, walk away. And people asked me, so I turned around 72 hours later and, and announced that my fashion brand was closed and done. And people like Lisa's face just now, right? Like people are like, how did you trust that message to just like turn on it in, you know, 72 hours. And the truth is that I knew something was off. I knew that wasn't how I wanted to feel. I couldn't put my finger on it, but that message in meditation was like a permission slip. Now that sounds all nice and fancy, right? Like tied up with a nice little bow. Like I shut my fashion business down. I'm good. I'm moving on to what's next. This is the part for me where the mindset work got even more intense because then I had to grapple with, did I fail? Did shutting down my business mean that I failed? Um, I had to go through an entire identity death because at that point I was a fashion designer. That's what I did. That's who I was. That was everything about me. And I didn't know anything about myself outside of that box. Um, I had, I luckily had hired a coach like 48 hours before that meditation happened. And to be honest, so what happened was I hired the coach on, I think it was Wednesday. I totaled my car on Thursday and then I was in the meditation on Saturday. And so over the course of like 72 hours, I committed $25,000 to a coach. I totaled my car and didn't have the proper insurance for it. And in LA, as we know, you need a car. And then I shut down my only source of income. And so those three things, I literally was like getting ready to contract and call the coach and say, I can't work with you. I don't even have a business anymore anyways. Um, you know, I can't do this, whatever, whatever. And I luckily didn't because I'm telling you that that moment that I was sitting on that curb in tears with my totaled car in front of me is literally the moment that changed my entire trajectory because I chose in that moment not to contract. I chose to trust that that had come into my life for a reason and that me totaling my car and shutting down my business was exactly what needed to happen for me to get to the next step. And within a year, I had a six-figure coaching business. And then that was six years ago. And I'm getting ready to like six or seven X my business in the next few months, right? So, you know, I look at those moments as being really key pivotal moments. And unfortunately, I see a lot of entrepreneurs not having that mind, the, the strong mindset that they need to trust that even the quote unquote bad things are happening for you and not to you. And so I just used that to fuel me into where I am now, I guess. That is an amazing story. I had no clue that all that happened. And I mean, I knew parts of it, but not all of that. And so thank you for sharing that because I think people oftentimes when something happens to them, they, they don't really know that it happens for them. So a couple of questions for you. There's obviously a shift in your mindset once you started meditating. Right. And so what brought you to meditation? Was it like you were just not happy in the fashion industry and then you picked up meditation? Like, did somebody introduce you to it? I guess is what I'm asking. Like, yeah. So I'd actually been introduced to meditation probably when did that happen? 2015, probably six years prior, I'd been introduced to meditation. So I joke, I had this really, really, really lovely boss when I had my, cause I had a day job through the entire eight years that I was, had my fashion label as well. And my date, my boss at the day job, we shared an office for a while and, and periodically I'd come in with like an upset stomach and she'd be like, oh, lift up your tongue. Like, let me drop a little tincture under it. Or my energy would be off. And she'd be like, here, hold on to this stone all day. Or I got in a car accident and she was like, I got you a yoga mat. And so I joke, I call her my spiritual gateway drug. Cause she just like, like she started a little and then a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And so things like, she would be like, oh, I'm going to a meditation tonight. What are you doing? Do you want to come with? And so I had known about it, but I had been using it just as a way to kind of like connect with a higher source rather than as a way to strengthen my inner resiliency. And so what shifted then in 2015, like I said, I went to that conference that January, two months before the car accident. And 
I met a guy named Hal Elrod and I got a copy of his book, The Miracle Morning. And I started practicing and having an hour every morning of meditation and journaling and reading and, you know, like body movement, all that stuff. And so I'd had a good 60 days under my belt of really starting to flex that muscle and use meditation in a way that I'd never used it before. And I just started really feeling the messages that were coming through me and trusting them more than the world that I saw outside of me. So when you say that um, it, it's hard to measure the results of mindset work, clearly there are, you know, when you started doing the mindset work, there's a, a certain result, whether it's the industry that you're working in, the number of jobs you have, um, how much money you're making, and just your overall state of wellness. Um, would you think that those are, if you're tracking, uh, good indicators and tangible measures of the benefits of said mindset? They definitely are. I think I'm speaking more in terms of like objective data, right? Like how, how, do, how does one measure wellness? Right. <laughs> like how does one correlate the fact that I meditated this morning with a phone call that I received later in the day, right? Like there, it's just, it's really hard to put like objective data on the benefits of meditation. Like even, you know, calm, right? Like calm is a good side, side effect of meditation. Well, okay. This morning, uh, you know, my calm level was a three. Like, what does that mean? I, so that's what I'm talking more about. I think there are very subjective ways to, to measure it. Mm -hmm. um, there, it's just really hard to like quantify it. Right. Like, whereas you can quantify money coming into your business because there are actual tangible objective numbers that go along with it. Right. Thanks for qualifying. It's funny because um, I used to, no, not, I shouldn't say I used to, I still do this sometimes where um, some days I just won't meditate or I won't do the practices I normally have. And I'll just go through my day and it's just like, why am I crying right now? Oh, because I'm feeling overwhelmed. Why am I feeling overwhelmed? Oh, well, because I'm allowing thought processes that are not serving me to run the gamut while when on the days that I meditate, I'm really able to understand that I'm not doing things by myself, that things are okay. And I think most importantly, be really subjective about things that do pop up. One of my favorite things is looking or being in an experience of something and noticing that if this was six months ago, you would have reacted a lot differently. So I feel like you can, you're not able to just chart a path of, or be able to take, you know, like a, a survey really and say, oh, this is different because of X, Y, or Z, right? Like this is different for me right now. And I know that internally, and I feel that internally. And also to say, when it comes to mindset, there's different shifts, right? So there's money shifts, a lot of the limitation, a lot of the attachments that we put on money, a lot of the limitations, attachments we put on relationships. Um, I love this uh, example of people that have been raised in entrepreneurial families or have been raised around a lot of money, even if they lose their money, their level of security is so high that they always are able to attract more money or start a new business or be able to connect to the right people, places, and things because that is their default, right? So one of the things that I wanted to ask you about, and this is this has been my learnings in the last year and a half-ish, is I love control because it feels like I'm the one that's doing the things and making the things happen. And that's actually counterproductive to my business success. And just like what you spoke about, like learning how to trust, like if I had been in a meditation and like that voice inside my head was like, listen, you got to shut down your business. I'd be all like, bitch, who are you talking to? Who are you? Like, what, how do you expect? I don't think, what are you? And, and then I would just like kind of counter that and keep going until it was like, oh, I guess I have to do this. Right. So for you, how did you feel, how do you feel like you built that muscle to be able to trust, to be able to say, okay, I believe in this. I'm going to go with the flow and just like, let the universe support me. Cause there's definitely been times in my life that I've been able to do that. However, when it's come to business and money, that's been the opportunity for growth for me. Yeah. And I think, you know, obviously that example that I shared from six years ago is like 
an anomaly and of like a very extreme example. Um, but I think that the way I got there was just through a bunch of micro examples of that. And I'm one, I love keeping proof. So I have folders upon folders upon folders of proof on my, on my laptop, on my cell phone, where I'm continually reaffirming to myself that the universe has given me a nudge and that it's worked. And not, that does not mean that it looks exactly the way I thought it was going to look, but that, that like it looking different doesn't mean it didn't work. Right. So just to put a clarifier on that, things don't have to turn out the way you want them to turn out in order for you to recognize that they've worked. I fully, again, believe that like that car accident worked. Like that was proof to me that the universe had my back because that car accident, my car was totaled. I got $600 in parts for my car and it was like a perfectly well-running machine prior to that time. And I didn't even have a scratch on me. I didn't even have a sore muscle after that car accident, right? So I am constantly looking around me and reaffirming when the universe gives me a nudge and I take it and it works out. That is how I think that you build that faith muscle, right? You wanna build a physical muscle, you pick up a weight every single day and you start with the lowest weights, right? You don't pick up the hundred pound weight. If you got that message and that was the first message that you got was to shut down your business, you would break yourself, right? So like me right now, I've been working out consistently like every day for the last four months and I'm still on the 10 pound weights. No shame in the light weights, right? Like this is how you build muscle. And I'm starting to see the definition of it literally in my physical body now. And so if you're just getting started on this journey, you have to start with the little things and you have to pick up those little things every single day for months upon months upon months upon months upon months to be able to build the muscle to withstand picking up the bigger things. Oh my gosh, I love, I love that there's, too. There's two things that you just said that I really want to reiterate and make sure we drive home. First of all, create evidence. I'm always a very huge proponent of that. And I actually do it the opposite way around sometimes um, when I'm coming from the space of lack. Whereas I'm just gonna let this play out and when something bad happens, then I'll know, oh, Cheryl, trust yourself. Like you really need to lean in and start trusting yourself. And then I also love the way that you said that you've been working out with your weights for months and then now you're seeing the results, i.e. sometimes we take stock of what happened and expect, okay, I'm gonna trust the universe this one time or I'm gonna trust my intuition this one time and then I'm gonna be a multimillionaire. No, it's the little things. It's the continual micro movements, micro choices, micro changes, and that all accumulates to your success. And your success is, it is, it is what you want it to be. It is already existing. We just have the opportunity to continue playing and trusting and moving forward so we can have the things that we want. Well, and this is one of the things that I think is so fascinating too, right? Like we have so many daily habits in our lives. We all brush our teeth every day. We load the dishwasher every day. We, for the most part, make our beds every day, right? Like we drink water every day. We do all these things every single day for our physical world environment. And yet when it comes to mindset, people are like, oh, I don't have time to meditate or, oh, I don't really have the space to sit down and journal about that right now. And it's like, well, but you have time to do all these other daily things. So why is mindset any different? Like mindset should be practice your mindset while you're brushing your teeth or loading the dishes for all I care. I don't know. But like the, this idea that it's not a daily thing and that it's not a cumulative thing. And that like, Oh, I'll just show up and do it once. And then like, Oh, the universe doesn't work for me. Bullshit. You have, you have to show up consistently and continuously in order to reap the benefits, just like if I had only picked up my weights one time, I wouldn't have this nice little uh, little line that started developing on my biceps right here, which I just noticed this weekend. Awesome. So what I'm hearing from you also is it's not necessarily going to look the way that you want it to look in order for you to, to actually have massive evidence that these mindset tools work. It's also, it's not going to happen or it's not necessarily going to happen 
when you want it to. It's going to happen when it's ready to happen. And, and those two things are definitely big when it comes to being faithful or believing. So really, really awesome. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, Cheryl initiated this whole seg like part of this conversation around control. And one of the words that I have just had to lean into is surrender. And it is, believe me, it's not an easy, I like purposefully had to put myself in situations where I had no choice, but to surrender in order to even start down this path. Like I started doing uh, suspended yoga so that I could just like flip upside down and, and just like practice, like physically practice the act of surrendering. But 2020, my word was surrender. And it's taken me to so many places that I didn't even know I needed or that I was looking for or that I wanted. And I can unequivocally say that I am in the best spot I think I've been in in my life since, I'm, I mean, maybe all of it, right? And in a weird way in that like part of that surrender took me out of Manhattan, which was one of the only dreams I've ever had for my life and moved me to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Like, had you ever asked me at any point in the last 38 years, if I would one live in Tulsa, Oklahoma and two be happy there, I would have told you to F off and like, get out of my face. Right. And now I look around and I'm like, I genuinely, I was out with a girlfriend yesterday and I was like, this is our life. Like, these are our lives. And it's, really, really good right now. And who would have guessed she also came from Manhattan that like, we would be here right now, this happy, like, it's nothing I ever would. And had I pushed to control what that looked like for myself, I think that I wouldn't be in the space that I'm in right now. Thumbs up to you for following that. Cause I also think as a big city person, metropolitan to move to, I mean, I've never been there. I think Oklahoma, I think of Warren Buffett. You know what I mean? Like I it. I it. <laughs> when borders open, right? Uh, maybe I'm <laughs> just like you and still, right? Like that's, where is that? And so um, it's awesome to see the shift in your mindset and, and just sharing that. So can you tell us a little bit about how you work with people? I mean, you're Google's number one coach. How do you feed all of this into how you work with your people? Yeah. So I have a few different programs that I work with people through. The first one is for like early stage entrepreneurs and it's a combination, you know, foundational business and foundational mindset. Like I've talked about here, you know, I believe that you can't have one without the other. You need both. You can have the best business strategy in the world. And if you don't believe it's possible for you, you can't create it. You have the best mindset in the world. And if you don't have a good strategy, you can't create it. Right. So Everything I do, I approach from that like business and personal aspect. Uh, so I work with early stage entrepreneurs to really help lay the foundation for your profitable business. I help solopreneurs uh, build and scale their businesses, bringing on teams, operations, cash flow, all of marketing, all of that stuff. Um, and then I do work with a very, very, very small select handful of CEOpreneurs that are looking to scale up over seven figures. So. Fun. How do you, how do you, are there, like, can you share with us how you fold in the mindset tools or the mind, mind work? Yeah. Everything I do is from the dual perspective. So for example, um, I have never really had a quote unquote funnel in my business, uh, because I have always believed up till this point, And I think a lot of this still carries over from my fashion business as well is like, oh, my email marketing doesn't work. Like I get that it works for other people, but like, it doesn't work for me. And like webinars don't work. I get that it works for other people, but like, it doesn't work for me. And so those are the stories that I've been holding on to in my business for six years. Right. And so this year I decided I wanted to be different. And I've been, you know, you can have that business strategy, but unless you're dealing with that underlying belief system. And so everything I do with entrepreneurs is like, okay, let's talk about what your opt-in looks like. And like here, like here's all the tangible, the technology, the, the layout, the, this is the, that's all these things. And let's talk about your belief system around that opt-in and how to make sure that that opt-in is aligned with you and your vision, right? Like you want to make a lot of money. Great. 
we can figure out how to make a lot of money. And what is your mindset around that? Do you even believe it's possible for you to build a multi six slash seven figure business? So literally everything I do is from the perspective of like, all right, here's the strategy. And what's holding you back from letting that be your reality? I love that you said that because I know for myself, there's been multiple times that I've worked with marketing companies and we talked about this on, on offline and poured a plethora of funds into them and had zero results. And my thought process at the end of it was like, I can't wait for this contract to be done. So it proves that this isn't work. Mm. And I'm, and then in my head, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But then like, why would I go ahead and do that? Oh, just to try it. And it really came from that level of FOMO. Right. So now that I have the opportunity to work with marketing companies or work with a different way of marketing, I'm very clear that my products and services are amazing and people love them. And I'm really excited to amplify them so much so that people that want them can see them and buy them and change their lives, right? So just really paying attention to how I'm feeling and what my thought process are whenever I'm endeavoring on anything, whether it's a quote unquote funnel or like a quiz or something. Um, I think that, that the mindset part of it is so, so important. It's kind of like vibrational marketing. And like what we talked about in regards to like SEO, how do we attract people to our businesses? And it's really, how do we feel about the marketing? How do we feel about our products and services? How do we feel about ourselves? And therefore the results after will follow that. Um, I've got one last question before we wrap up and- oh, Can I say one quick thing? Yeah, of I course. Think, I think too many people look to the strategy piece as like the fix, right? Mm -hmm. Like. And in reality, it's actually just a band-aid. And so like, if you have a hugely gaping wound that's like infected, you're gonna go in there and you're gonna clean out that infection. You're gonna make sure it's like healing properly. You're gonna do all these things. You're not just gonna put a band-aid on it and be like, I hope this works. Which I, I just see so many people looking to the strategy piece being like, I don't need the mindset. I just need the strategy, just like get me there. And I'm like, but you can't get there on the outside until you're first there on the inside. And if there's something on the inside that is out of alignment, you literally cannot get there. You just yes. can't. It's the do being and having, right? Like people think if I do this, then I'll be this and then I'll have this versus when I choose to be this and then you take that aligned action, then you'll have all the things that you desire. So really read. And it's so much it's easier. So easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you get so many unknown benefits. Like it seems like magic is happening and things are just because you're being the way that you need to be. Right. So I like that vibrational marketing, by the way. I love nice it. One. Nice one. <laughs> Thank nice you. One. Nice one. So we've got some, um, one last question is what are the mindset tips and like tactics? And I know we just talked about like tactics are the way, but the actual things that you feel like has been super supportive for you and your growth, or if somebody else is, you know, at a plateau in their business, what would you suggest that they start doing, start playing with in order to attract that next level to them? So I think the biggest thing is I like a constant curiosity, constant, like I am constantly looking in journaling around like, what do I believe about what's happening? What do I believe about the circumstance and situation I'm in? And, and is that what I want to be believing? I just sat down yesterday, had a, a block come up on Tuesday and sat down yesterday and was like, okay, like what's true in this for me? What is not true in this for me? What do I want to be true about the circumstance and situation? So it's like this, hyper vigilance and hyper awareness of having the curiosity to go to the places that are holding you back. And it can be a little difficult if you're not used to this kind of experience or living. It's like a fish being in water, not knowing it's in water because it's just in water and that's where it lives. You're in your belief systems because you were given those belief systems probably at a very young age and you've just lived in them and you don't even know that they're there. 
but it's constantly diving in, inquiring, being curious about like what's coming up for you. And sometimes it can hit you out of the blue. I didn't realize that I was bumping up against what I was bumping up against on Tuesday until I sent a voice memo. And in the middle of the voice memo, I just started crying. And I was like, what is going on here? Like what? all this stuff is coming up. Right. And then it's like, then it's my responsibility to sit down and look at it and be aware of it, decide what I want, decide if I want to let go of things that have been holding me back. So it's really like hyper vigilance, hyper curiosity, hyper willingness and courage to like go to those places. And that's, and it's a never ending process, never ending, never ending. And it's funny because when I first started getting into this and people are like, it's a never ending process. I was like, well, why do I want to do that? Because I like (laughs) success. I like checking things off and being like, cool, done, wicked, next thing. However, I think that there's, I want to say like a sense of relief in understanding that legit, this is never ending. Like we have the opportunity to continue to grow and play and expand and evolve. And there's literally no limit except for the limit that we put on ourselves. So love that. Amazing. And Brie has been amazing enough to bless us and our listeners yes. with three, two weeks in her amazing um, membership, her paid membership program. So I don't know if you know, but to work with Brie is kind of a big deal. Um, and so if you want to soak up some more of her magic, make sure to head over to the unapologetic entrepreneur.me and then you'll be able to register for your free two weeks and get more Brie magic. Again, she's got all these different things, whether you're in the beginning stages, the middle, or you know, you're not getting into the end. There's never any end. There's so with no, that, you just said it's the never ending story. It's never, where's my luck dragon? Um, <laughs> I mean, so one thing it's, there's no the on the URL. So it's just unapologetic, unapologetic entrepreneur dot me. Thank you so much. And with that, um, my name is Cheryl Sutherland. Thank you so much, Brie, for being here. Lisa, any last words? Many thanks to you. I think it's awesome. And I've had a chance to talk to you also offline and I think it's really great that you do both of these. So thanks for joining us today. Yay. Thank you. And I just want to give a shout out to Lisa and Cheryl because these are the two women that I go to when I'm struggling with my mindset as well. And I'm just, you two are amazing. You both have helped me so much this year, just in where I'm at. And so Um, If you guys are listening and you haven't yet subscribed, do it. You will not regret it. These two are just incredible. And like I said, they're who I go to for help when I need, you know, this stuff as well. And when I need the truth reflected back to me when I can't do it myself. So much love to you both. And thank you so much. Thank you for being part of our high vibe. um, Nope. High vibe village village That's village good. i like that because it takes a village to do this sort of work however <laughs> not everybody's going to get in this village <laughs> it's a vip village baby <laughs> so with that ooh, that's another episode of navigating mindfulness we'll see you on the next round and we're going to be getting into more magic so with that have an amazing rest of your day and we'll see you soon mm-hmm.